Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. I have been asked for quite a long time now to do a complex cane video but have always shied away from it as it's nearly impossible to do with step by step instruction as every cane is different, every cane you want to do to manipulate one of these small pieces is different and to show that on a video is just nigh on impossible, you just don't have the time. However, the British Polymer Clay Guild is doing some inches um, and I thought because I'm known for my cane work I ought to do a complex cane so whilst I'm doing it I thought I might as well do a video to show you a few bits and pieces. There are some amazing polymer clay artists out there, so if it's something that you'd like the look of or something you fancy doing, then have a look at the work of John Stuart Anderson, Jane Dwyer, Claire Wallace, Wendy Jaw St. Jaw, those are just a few of the names that uh, trip off the tongue when you're thinking about this sort of thing, and just have a look, do some searches, and you'll find loads of other amazing polymer clay artists. Um, what I have done in the past is made some very bad mistakes when I'm doing complex canes and that is why I've done this video. It's as much to help you learn from my mistakes so that hopefully you don't make the same as much as anything else. And whilst a lot of the um, video is fast forwarded I have tried to give tips and techniques throughout which will help you get a good result in any complex cane you're doing. Other canes I've done just to show you, um, one of the first ones I did which went horribly wrong um, was the tiger cane um, and those of you who see my website and see my blog this is a half a tiger face um, the first one I did I just lost the whole thing and it's probably one of the closest I've come to being in tears of polymer clay um, it was just heartbreaking um, but I lost the whole lot so when I did it next time round I did a lot of the changes I'm going to tell you about this time and I ended up with, with this cane and this was a tip somebody gave me before you reduce the cane to take a slice off it. So this is a very thin slice which I've never actually cured so it's still in its um, unbaked form and I've always kept this so I take this to shows and show people how you can start with one thing and end up with another. Now as you can see here you will always get some form of distortion. It's, it's almost impossible not to get some form of distortion when you're working with um, these big canes but what you're looking to do is get something that's good enough that it still makes sense when you show people things show you another one this is a zebra cane I've done in the past and he makes quite nice beads I've nearly run out of him and you can see here one of the techniques I'm showing you is to pack um, clay around the outside of the piece you're doing I'm not doing it with the rose cane I did today but that is another technique have a look at Wendy Jaw St. Jaw's um, blogs and her posts and she will give you lots of um, tips and techniques as well so if any of you have got any really good tips or techniques that I don't mention in this video as I'm going along, please do put them in the comments below and then everybody else can see those and learn from those as well because that really helps out the whole community. And just one last quick one to show you. I had a lady who brought her own design, Annabelle Torino, who came with a lovely design and we had a one day's workshop and this is the design um, she came with. So this is one of the canes I made up. And just to show you, this is made with Primo. So although, as I mentioned, the stiffer clays are good to use, you can use other clays as well, and I'll come on to that in just a second. So, going back to the one we're doing today, a few other things you need to know, and this is vital information before you start doing any form of um, complex cane work. These canes take time. It takes time to do the preparation, time to create the cane, time to rest the cane, and then time to reduce the cane. And preparation for all of that is key. Give yourself time. Don't start this as a project where you've got like an hour or two. You will need a couple of days. Set aside a nice long weekend and then prepare for it. Plan your design. Decide what you want to do and make a note of it. For anyone wanting to do this particular design, I have got a pro forma for this, which I will add to my website and I'll put the details in the comments um, below the video. If you're mixing colours, mix Mix your colours in such a way that you can repeat them. So say take four bits of um, red to one bit of yellow to mix a colour and then make a note of that and then if you run out of that particular colour you can um, repeat it. Natural subjects are more forgiving, like the flower here, because if it goes out of shape it doesn't look so bad as something like um, an animal or a face or a figure. You will need a large amount of clay. Do not underestimate how much clay you, you are going to use. Just for packing this clay in alone, this cane alone. So just the black, I used 10 ounces. So that's five small packs of clay. So I'm serious, don't underestimate the clay. So don't start when you've only got a few packs because you'll get halfway through and then you'll realise you don't have enough. 
condition all of your clay at the same time so it's all ready to go and ready to be at the same amount or same type of conditioning before you start. That way when you reduce your clay or reduce your cane it will reduce at the same speed. And also if you possibly can make your design as close to the size, the finished size you want as possible so you've got as little reduction to do as possible. Onto the clays, the firmer the clay, the better they will hold the design. But then conversely, the harder they are to reduce. So it's a bit of a balancing act and you need to decide where you want to be and what clay you want to use. For the one we've done today, I've actually used Kato Poly Clay, which is a really nice firm clay and which is the one I now use. And so the zebra you saw and the tiger cane you saw, they were also all in Kato Poly Clay but it is hard to reduce, it really is hard to reduce. Um, so if you've got any problems with your hands, arthritis, manipulation, then probably one of the softer clays won't give you such a good um, continuation of the design inside, but it will be an awful lot easier to reduce. So bear that in mind as well whilst you're going. And then about just a quick couple of quick things about the video before we start. As I said, it's not a step-by-step, -step. it cannot be, because all of these pieces in the rows that I'm reducing, they all take about five or ten minutes to get into the right shape. So what I've done is I've told you before I do each bit what I'm planning to do, and then I fast forward through. And then when you, I've got to the stage where you can understand what it is I'm doing, I then fast forward through a lot of it. But don't forget, you can, with the videos on YouTube, go to the very top right of the screen and there's a little box there and you can slow down the fast forwarded bits if you want to or if you need to. I will try and do um, comments for a lot of it and actually do subtitles, but also don't forget if you want to hear everything that's being said then there is the closed captions box bottom right of the screen and you can actually see in words what I'm saying although it takes a couple of hours after the video has been done for YouTube to get that put in. To do this single rose cane I've probably done about 30 plus Skinner blends I lost count um, so again that's something if you're doing something natural be aware of Skinner blends are part and parcel of doing polymer clay I have put a link in the comments below to my Skinner blend tutorial if that's something that you're new to. Okay, I think that's about it. I will add other bits and pieces as we go along. Um, and I say this this video is not for everybody. This is particularly for someone wanting to do a complex polymer clay cane. If that's what you've always wanted to do and you don't really know where to start, then fantastic, this video is for you. If it's something you're not interested in, then please just skip it. Don't bother putting in the comments that you were really bored and that it wasn't what you wanted to do because I'm telling you now, if it's not what you want to do, don't watch the rest of it. Okay, but for those of you who do, let's get started. So having decided that I was going to do a complex rose, I had to look at images online and using them put together a design of my own. So this one is very much just done as a black outline of the petals and it's very important whatever design you're doing to do these outlines so you can see where each section is that you're going to have to put together a piece for the cane. The other tip I'm going to give you is whenever you do an outline if you can if you have got somewhere that you can um, scan and copy obviously it makes life a lot simpler but you will need a reverse of this pattern that's exactly the same size and I'm going to do my rows in two different sizes um, starting the cane large and then going small. So now you need to make some copies of this. If you've got a scanner, then obviously scanning it and then changing the size of it is the best way to do it. If you haven't, then it's going to be sort of tracing by hand and in which case you probably want to do this at the same size that you want to do the whole rows at. This drawing I've made much bigger than my finished cane is going to be because I'm going to make the centre part first, the complex bit, this size, and then make that smaller and add it in to another piece. So having done that, I've made my copy. So here's one piece. And what I've done, I've just put it on some acetate sheets. So it's a piece of paper, sellotaped with a pattern uppermost, behind an acetate sheet so I can use this and put the clay on this and work with this. And I've done one that way round, and then a mirror image. Now, I've actually just coloured this mirror image just with crayons just to give myself an idea of the canes and the blends I need to make but the important thing is the fact that this is a mirror image so that when I'm working on my cane I can make sure that one side fits nicely around a piece then turn it up the other way and check that the other side also fits nicely so both of these have been put 
on the pieces of acetate. The other thing about doing something like a rose, so I've done this, just put some coloured pencil in because I wanted to make sure that I made the darks dark enough and the lights light enough. Now, I haven't actually got a white pencil, or the white pencil didn't come out, so when I do the Skinny Blends, I will actually add a few more highlights in here than have shown up on this particular piece. But when you're doing a cane and it's going to go extremely small, you need to overemphasize the differences in tone to make the darks darker, the lights lighter. Because when this goes down to about that size, it really needs to be able to see all the details of the pattern clearly. So I've got those two that size. As I said, I'm going to do this first bit quite large, but then I also reduced the size and I've got this is the size of the cane I will eventually end up working to. So once the middle bit's done, I will then swap over to this piece. So those are those bit done and ready to go. The next important thing is to get your clay ready. So as I mentioned for today's project I used Kato poly clay and I also used as I mentioned an awful lot so it was about 10 ounces so nearly a whole pack of the black clay that I used in the end to go around the outside. The main colour for the um, petals of the rose I made out of the yellow but also with quite a bit of white, so probably a bit, it was about half a pack, so about six ounces of the um, yellow, about the same of the white. And in most of the yellows, I added a tiny little bit of this magenta colour. So turn it on in, and the outside's got a bit discoloured. Tiny bit of the magenta colour, um, just to make this just a little bit orange and sort of peachy coloured. And then used a bit of the yellow into the magenta to do the oranges and the reds around the outside. So these basically are the three colours I used and only those for making the um, colours in the rose petals. And then for the darker bits in the shadow of the roses I used mainly red with a tiny bit of green just to give a nice um, light um, sort of caramelly type brown colour and then added a bit of the yellow and the purple in to sort of change the colours and then for the darker browns just added a little bit of the black. So very few colours actually used and it's all about mixing. I haven't shown you the proportions that I've mixed in because again that would take too long to do. My general rule when I'm mixing colours I will start with my base colour so I'll start with the yellow, condition a lot of that, keep some of it as the main yellow colour, then add a bit of white to make lighter, take off bit, add a bit more white to make lighter still. So I'll probably end up with sort of three or four lighter um, amounts of yellow and then start adding tiny little bits of the magenta till I end up with more sort of orangey bits of yellow. And that goes all the way through. And then the same with the browns. So start off with my mid-brown colour, which was the red with a little bit of green, and then start adding a little bit of magenta and a little bit of black and a little bit of the yellow just to make it more and more orangey and more brown as we go. So having done that, I think I can now at the stage where I can show you all the colours as I had them mixed up. And here I have got so I'll run you through. So I've got all the colours that I'm going to need to make the yellow part of the petals. I've got some darks here. It'll be my dark shades. And I've also got, let me turn it around the other way. And I've also got some of the pinks that I'm going to put the pinks on the outer edge. So it gives me a starting point so I can then make very small little skinner canes, which is all I need to do. Now all this clay is conditioned to exactly the same extent. It's all been conditioned on the same morning so I'm now ready to go and have the time put aside so I can actually start creating the cane. So going back to um, our pattern here, the first bit I'm going to do is this little tie, let me bring this up here, is this little bit in the centre here, the dark bit, and then these two pieces either side. Now that's very much just a dark piece, so I can make that all of one colour, and all I'm looking at is the shape of it. So it's like a weird sort of triangular shape. These pieces are both going to be little Skinner Blend canes, and then the middle bit, again, is a slightly darker cane. So as I do this, as I say, it's not going to be completely step by step because everyone's um, large cane is going to be different, but I'm going to show you the techniques I use. So when I'm starting to work, I'm wanting my cane to only be probably about an inch in height at this particular stage, because of course I'm going to make this smaller. The finished smaller size one, I'm going to do this one, it'll actually be about two inches, five centimetres in height that I'll be working. But say this little bit, I'm only going to go about one inch. 
two and a half centimeters so this little piece is really quite tiny so I'm just taking some of my dark clay so I've got a piece there that's still too big I'm going to do a rough Skinner blend of those three. So having got my rough blend, I'm going to fold it in half, put it back through the pasta machine to give myself a nice long thin piece. And now I'm going to start making a concertina of this, but sort of about that wide. So I'm thinking of the size of the piece I need. And it doesn't need to be very wide, but it needs that nice blend from one side through to another. So this bit I'm going to do a little bit of Skinner Blend too with dark colours. And then exactly the same process to make it into a log like that and then we can start working on the size. Now we've got a nice bit of uh, gradient again so we're now going to make this tiny little piece in the middle. And then we can start putting these pieces together, see how we're going. I'm just constantly checking against the drawing, pulling things out when they need to sort of change the direction or they need to spread, and bearing in mind the size on both sides. Now I haven't quite got as much detail in this one obviously because I haven't got the, the coloured drawing, but I've still got enough that I can see that it's actually a bit too big on this end. And one of the things you'll find as you're doing it, so it needs to be that way around, is that as you add extra layers of clay, so you'll probably end up making it smaller. So you think you've got the right size. Once you start adding the extra pieces in, it's amazing how it gets bigger. All your bits you take off, save those, because they can be um, mixed together if necessary to create more colors later on. So I think we've got our first three bits more or less done, or our first four bits rather. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this little piece just on the top here, because of course we've already got this going, it's the same blend as we've got there, just need to change the shape of it. So I'll just do that one next. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a tiny, very, very thin layer just to separate those two, because putting those two together in the picture, I've got a black line in between, but in re when I make it in reality, there's nothing in between. So just to give it a little bit of separation, I'm gonna take some of the dark color of clay, not the completely dark, just darker than the two bits that I'm putting together. I'll take a little bit, just put it through the thinnest setting on the pasta machine.
So the next piece we're going to do is this piece. So this piece is the blend we've already got, but then we want to add some of this dark on in the bottom as well. So I'll start by making this piece roughly the right size and then I'm going to add some of that blend on. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is one, two, three little bits around this side. Now these first two are quite simple. And there's actually, if you look carefully, this is a very simple, very pale blend, these three pieces, and in between we've got darker bits. So we've already got enough to do that one. We've got enough to do that one. We've got enough of this dark blend to do this little bit. We've got enough of this blend to do that little bit and add a little bit of dark in. So that just leaves us then to do these very light Skinner blends. Let's put a piece on one side and we'll do the light Skinner blend. And the same as before, I'm going to make this very thin and concertina it up till I get a blend along those lines. So here we go. It doesn't matter particularly that it's not very neat for what we're doing at the moment because all three of these little bits don't need to be the same. So I'm just going to make this nice and thin and then we'll start to do our first little piece here. If you find the bit you've added is making the whole thing too long, don't be worried about chopping the whole bit off slightly. There we go. So now we need to do this dark bit in here. And we need a little bit of the dark right in that corner. So we should hopefully have enough just with this tiny piece here. So if you've got little pieces left over, just make use of them. Right, so we've got a very, very thin piece of the dark. Incredibly thin. In fact, it's so thin, I'm just going to put a piece of darker colour clay there. And I'm looking to see where it goes, and it's from just here, all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so now we need this piece. So I'm going to start with one of the bigger pieces because that isn't quite going to be enough to do it. And we need to stretch this one quite nice and wide. And on this one, the light side's going to be on the outside.
Okay, it's coming on. So we probably need to make that one a little bit thinner as we go further on. But we'll just do this bit now. So this bit, we're going to have light yellow down, all the way down to, I'll probably do it down to an orange. So very similar to this. Apart from the fact this is just light. So we, we might just have enough of this one to do. Let's have a look, see. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the yellow right over this side and then I am also going to take a little bit of the extra blend that we'd had just to add a little bit extra onto this side. So if you find you've got a piece where you need to add an extra bit on, just take yourself an extra bit of clay. And I've got really sort of quite a triangular piece just on the end there. So I'm just going to take that and add that onto the inside edge of this piece. Blend it down slightly with a knitting needle. Take off the excess. And see whether that's made a better shape for what we want. Okay, so now as before, I'm going to take a little bit of a darker colour and just put it there. So we've got some separation between that piece and that piece. And if I look, I'm actually going to take that all the way up round to the dark. So we've got a piece that goes the whole way round. And then we'll just take that off. Take off the excess around the side. Okay, so we can see that at the moment it's still working. And then we can move on to our next piece. So I'm now going to start on these pieces, do this one, this one, and then I'm going to put this one and we're going to go all the way around until we do the piece up here. So I will carry on working on those. So you've got the idea of what I'm doing now. I'm just going to find, make myself little Skinner blends, whichever one suits the piece that I'm doing, and then just add them on, constantly checking this and this side to make sure that they fit.
So to do this next bit, I've gone for a darker blend here. We've got very dark going through to the yellow and this will start filling in this bit, this bit, and probably one of these two bits as we carry on making our way around. So the first thing I'm thinking is how much I need of the very dark bits and not very much because it's just down in this dark corner. So I'm actually going to chop off some of the rest of it. So that gives me these rough sort of shaping so I can start and start formatting this shape and be pay particular attention to this bit in here. This bit here, I can form that shape afterwards when I'm putting this bit on, but this is the bit I'm paying attention to at the moment. So moving on to this bit now, I've just had to create another um, cane so I can get this bit done. So I'll just add that piece in. If you find you've gone a little bit bigger than you think, so this is actually going slightly wider than you want, then just pull the bit that you've been working on slightly longer. You see I'm actually spreading it out slightly longer here and that will make it thinner and give you more chance of keeping to your original picture. So keep going back, keep testing all the time. Making sure you're as near as you can be to your original. And don't be scared to sort of be quite harsh with it at times. And if you need to, just chop bits off. So I'm going to take a piece of this darker mix I did but there's actually very little yellow in that so I'm going to move it out slightly. I'm also going to, the dark is either side here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a chunk of it. It's not a very big piece, just a small triangle here. So I'm going to take off most of the yellow here and I'm going to chop it in half and put it together like that because now I've got a piece where I can have a diamond or a triangle shape with a point each side being at the dark bit. And now in here again we have got very very dark so I was going to take some straight 
dark clay and just infill a little bit and then we can start working again from our Skinner blend. So I'll probably do that bit dark, that bit with the Skinner blend up to where this bit fits on and then this bit as a separate in a Skinner blend. So I've just got the last couple of pieces, so we'll do this one, then we'll do that one, and then we'll reduce all of this, um, ready for the next stage. Okay, so this piece is going to be quite an interesting piece because it needs to fit in around this piece which actually should be sitting up and proud, it's got a bit squashed in. So it needs to fit into this piece, around this piece, into this piece and around here. So that's quite a lot to do. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to infill round here and round here with a dark mix and then make sure that the outside colour is the same colour as the bottom of my outer mix and that way I should be able to infill and get the next petal on. So I need to make another bit of the inside mix. So there we have the first part of the rose finished. So this is the bit I now need to reduce down. So I've made it into as easy a shape as I can, considering how complex the middle of the rose is, as easy a shape as I can to start reducing down. And then we'll see where we go from there. So what I need to do is to get it down small enough to fit round here. So a bit smaller. So I'm going to reduce it as best I can by pushing in whilst pulling it 
longer. I'm going to be doing it mainly up in the air to try and avoid getting any flat surfaces and I'm going to try and keep the shape very much as it is but reduce it down smaller. I'll get to the stage I'll probably just fast forward right through to where it's all done and we've got it down to a nice small size. Okay, so managed to reduce it down. Slight, obviously, changes in size. I've lost a little bit off the top of this petal here and a little bit off the same one at the side here. But all things considered, I'm actually pretty happy with that. And we can now start moving on to add in the big petals around the outside. So I'll be using this coloured sheet still to make myself or to know where I want the, the um, colours to, to go, but I'll be making them in this sized cane. Okay, so let's start on with the big ones. Okay, so I've, as I say, reduced that one all the way down. I've actually added a tad more on, just around the side here and just around the side there, because I lost a little bit when I reduced it. So the next bit I'm going to do is this bit, and then followed by that bit. And these are the last two pieces I'm going to do, which then don't have some of the pinky red around the outside. So do these two bits first, and then we're gonna do these little bits here and then start making these nice big leaves in exactly the same way as we've done the other bits so far. So I'll just crack on with those two first. So this one's going to be just a simple um, yellow and pale yellow, and then this one's going to be one of the darky orangey ones going down to a bit of yellow at the bottom. Same as before, it's gonna blend and fit it to the right size for our piece. Okay, so what I did there, I'm now going to do this bit here, which in this one's actually a tiny little bit. So I took a leftover bit from a darker Skinner blend, chopped it off until I got the same colour to go with that lighter Skinner blend I've just made. And I'm going to reorientate it to go along those lines so it should fit in there. I've just spotted there's another tiny little triangle just this side round here so it creates a sort of a nice line across here so I was going to fill in that tiny little triangle down here as well. So the next bit is this dark bit here and once this bit's done then I say all the bits we've done are finished apart from doing the big outer petal so we'll just get this weird shape coming on here.
Okay, so I'm not going to fold that piece in until I've got this first petal on here. So I've actually decided I'm going to do three different Skinner blends for this one. Because whenever I'm putting the just a small amount of pink around the outside, and because I want it to spread the whole way around that side of the petal, I'm not going to make the whole thing the same because you don't want the same blend all the way around. It'll make sense as I go on to the next bit. So for our dark cinder blend, I'm going through these colours. And remember I said I've got the same on this end as I've got on this end. So that one will join onto that. And then I've repeated that by having this light yellow here and the light yellow on the start of the pink one. So again, I can effectively join these three together and put them together and they'll have the same colours matching as we go through. So I'll get all these blended up and show you what we're going to do as we go through the next stage. So there we have my three blends. So that one will match to that one, which will then match onto that one. And I need to be aware when I'm doing it that in my actual picture, where we've got this dark bit here, I've actually got a nice light bit, so that gives the separation between that and that. So I only want my dark cane to start from about here and go around here, so it's not very big at all on this, it's only about down there. So I'll do that one first, and then once I've got that piece done, then I'll add that piece on the outside, and then we'll do the pink piece on the outside of that last thing. So let's just do these two first, and then there's a couple of little things we need to talk about when we get to this one, so I'll come to that when we get to that stage. So when I'm making this shape, I'm remembering that of course I've already put this little bit in, so I don't need that much there. And I'm also remembering that I'm going to add a little bit of pink right there on the outside. So actually what I'm looking to make is just a small bit that's going to fit in the middle of those two. So that's why I'm going smaller than the actual size of this petal. In. So I now need to make sure this fits in right in tight under where the other one goes and it needs to be quite a sharpish angle so it fits in nicely. And I still haven't quite folded that piece in because we've still got this last piece of pink to go around the outside. For the pieces around the outside, they're very, very thin. But what you tend to find on roses and for the where you've got these added colours, it's not just a straight bit of um, colour. You see here, where the, even with a pencil, I've sort of done the lines in. That's obviously very, very rough. But just gives an idea that you want some form of movement going down across the petal. So before I even start doing anything else, with this blend I've got here, I am going to start pushing in. You do this either with the blunt side of your craft knife, and I'm pushing in right the way down through all those layers, making sure not to cut yourself or get the blade anywhere near you. And then push it back together. I'm going to make it thinner because we've already got some nice lines going through there, but I want more than that. So each time I make it thinner, 
and by thinner I mean less wide this way I'm going to do the same and I can do it you could do it with an old credit card or something that you're not using I'm also going to use the blunt end of my tissue blade but in order to do that I'm going to make sure I keep my fingers very well away from the sharp end but same thing just pressing down in because you're forcing the clay down and you'll make little indents which will just show up just a little bit when you're doing your petals and then roll over the top because otherwise it'll start to disintegrate when you start reducing it and now we'll start making it to the size where it's going to go not all the way around so if I look again at my picture it probably starts from about round here but all the way around to this top and I do want it to go all the way around to the top because these colours are going to be very similar here so I'm going to make sure it goes all the way around and I'm not going to put this end of the petal down completely yet because we've got a little bit of the darkness here to fit round it when we do that side of the rose. So let's start pulling this wide. This stage I'm going to press it in again, do exactly the same again. just going to roll the join so we get a very very fine joined line do the same on this side now as I said earlier I don't want to push that down completely yet but what I do want to do is put some more sort of marks in this to sort of join it in so because of that I'm going to just leave my knitting needle in place there so that when I push down here with my tissue blade again using the blunt end only I can push down and get some movement down to push these colours down into the cane into the rose petal more and I'll do it small increments top bottom and then middle. Making very sure so I'm not cutting my fingers. I really want to try and get some movement down. It won't be a lot but it should just be enough to make it more so more of a frayed look at the edge of that rose petal. And then I was going to pull that slightly longer because it's a little bit large. So the next one we're going to do is this one around here. So again, no darkness in this one, so no small dark um, cane, but I will do two canes, one the orange shoes to yellow and then a pink one to go around the outside. Okay, that bit's nearly done. It's a bit big at the moment because obviously I've got to put the pink on the outside. Now I only want, again, a very thin layer of pink. So I'm just going to see whether or not I can make this stretch. If I can, brilliant. If I can't, then I'll simply make another one. Now we're about to do this one, which will be orange through to yellow 
and then pink down into yellow and again I'll use the same band of yellow so that I can join the two Skinner bends together. We'll do this bit next and on this bit we've got a little bit of dark here and a little bit of dark here so I'm going to do those as separate little canes first which will then leave me if I sort of fill around to round that off there and round that off there one orange to the yellow cane to go around there and then one pink bit to go around there and I think I've already got enough left of this one I've just done to be able to add that on to the outside of that one so that's the bit we'll do next starting with those two little bits of dark So there we go, that's the last piece put on there, so a little bit of fiddling around. It wasn't quite, doesn't quite match up exactly with the outer petals, but I'm not worried about these outer petals quite so much. It's more the inner petals and making sure that they were okay, which is the important thing, because we can always change the shape of these and just let it make up its own thing as it goes along. So we've only got three petals to go, this one, this one and this one. I'm just going to spend a bit of time just readjusting the shape of these round here because pressing down on these outside ones I've sort of moved the shape of these a little bit more. So I'll spend a bit of time doing that and then do those three shapes and as they are very much the same as we've done previously, so a little bit of dark I'll put that piece in and fill in, a um, little bit of dark round here I'll fill in, so I'll add in this one, then this one, then this one. So I'll speed through that and just show you the changing the shape and adding them on and we'll get to the stage where our actual rose is finished being made.
Okay, so there we have more or less the finished rose. And I'm saying more or less because obviously it's finished as far as the um, my original design was concerned. However, when I was putting this um, particular petal on, you can see here it should have actually been much bigger and much broader. Um, so I have two options. I could either take that off and cut it all out and put a much bigger one on, which would alleviate the, the fact that this side's slightly less big than this side. Or, which is what I'm actually going to do, I'm just going to add another petal on this side because it's a rose, so we can add another petal on. So I'm just going to make it up quite a big one all the way around from here, all the way around to here. Just quite shallow, but so it just covers up and gives us something else all the way around the outside there. So I've already made the Skinner Blends for it because I realised when I was making the last one that's what I needed to do. So I'll add a little bit of dark in here, a little bit of dark in here and I might even just very quickly take this uh, pattern piece off the back here and just draw in roughly where I want it to go to make sure that it looks okay. Okay so I've just drawn in roughly where I want this extra one to be and now we'll just start making a really nice long big petal. Okay, so there we have the finished piece with the extra um, petal all the way around. So the next thing we need to do is just to finish it off to create the outline so we can pack it up to create a square shape because then I can reduce this in a square shape. And I'm planning on doing black. It's going to be just a plain colour to make the most of the colour of the rose. And as we've done before, all I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in all the extra little bits around the outside. I will re-emphasize some of these points for the rose where they've become slightly um, pushed back as I've been adding the extra petals. So I'll create nice points and things. So fill in with all the black. And then once I've got a nice outline, fill in up to the corners. So now we're gonna start packing the outside of the rose. And there's a couple of tips I'll give you now for when you're doing this sort of thing. The first one I've already mentioned, which is to fill in all the small areas first to give yourself a, an easier outline to work with. Second is when we pack things, pack them in a shape that's going to be easy to reduce. Now the three shapes that are easiest to reduce are the square or, or rectangle oblong, doesn't have to be as long as it's got straight sides, um, a round or a triangle. So as you can see now in this one I've actually gone for a square so that's what I'm going to do. So I only have these small bits to fill in 
round the outsides. The next thing is choose a colour, a background colour, particularly if you're going to do a plain colour, that's easy to replicate. So I've gone for black, which is straight out of the packet, and there's about six ounces of clay here, so a lot of clay. Um, it's very easy to underestimate the amount of clay you need to go around the outside of these things. So that's why I choose a colour that's easy to replicate. There's nothing worse than packed most of it and then suddenly run out of the colour that you've got. OK, so what I'll do now, I will just start slowly packing around until we get end up with a nice square shape for our cane. Now I'm just going to take a bit of the black and just cover over any areas that have nothing on at the moment. So I've got a complete layer of black around. So now I can start filling in the corners. And because I've gone bigger than I expected, all I'm going to do is take it up so that I give myself a corner to add in. I've already made a rough corner shape here. And I'm just going to look and see whether or not I need any further packing. Now, in actual fact, that is quite a good match for that particular corner. So for now, we will leave that bit in place make sure it sort of fits in both top and bottom and I will do the same for the other corners now the other thing I'm going to do I'm going to pull that in slightly there pull that in slightly there and I'm going to use my blade to neaten it off at this stage using the lines on my grid so now I'll move it over here line this one up with my line on the bottom I hope you can see that and now I know I've got to fill in a space here Okay, of my six ounces, I've only got that amount left, so I need to condition some more black so I can fill in those two ends of the cane. So I've conditioned probably another four ounces of black clay, and I've got my two bits ready to go on the corners. So as before, I'll just work one corner at a time.
So there we are. I'm just going to get it onto a squared measuring sheet because it's gone bigger than my initial square. And then I'll have a quick look to see so it's about four inches square by the look of it. And then I can really make sure and spend a bit of time just pressing in to make sure it's about as square as I can get it. I can either roll or trim off a bit of clay from the sides because now we've got the hard part. Now we have to leave it a couple of days. And the reason being is that the black clay I've just been working with, so it's going to be a lot softer and a lot quicker to move and easier to move when we reduce than the yellow clay on the inside. So we need to leave it until all the clay's working at the right sort of, um, or the same sort of consistency and condition. Okay, so I've left my cane resting for a couple of days um, so that all the clay inside is more or less at the same um, stiffness. What I've also done, in order to help me when I'm reducing it, I've put what I call registration lines down the side. So each corner I've put a tiny little line of pink and then in three places down the sides I put yellow. So that when we reduce this, reduce this and make it longer and thinner and smaller, I'll be able to keep an eye on how straight these lines are and where the corner parts are. Of course I need to do this because the whole of my cane is packed in black. If your cane was something like a kaleidoscope or where you've got a design going right to the outside, you wouldn't need to do this because you'd just keep an eye on the different patterns and where they were along the length. Okay, so one cane ready to go. When I first started making the big canes, um, as I said before, I've made some horrendous mistakes and lost a whole load. And one of the tips that I was given, sadly I can't remember who it was who told me, so I wish I could because I put their name in, in credits. Um, but I know this is a technique that um, Wendy Jaw St. Jaw uses, so whether it was she was the first person, I don't know, um, was to pack extra scrap clay on the ends, both ends of your cane. Because of course you always get um, distortion on either end of your cane. So if you've packed with extra scrap clay, then you get less distortion in the main part of the clay. However, since the advent of the cane savers, cane caps, um, which are the bits you put on the end of your canes, that has done away to a certain extent with needing the scrap clay on the end of your canes. Now, they don't come in sizes big enough to deal with what I'm dealing with. This is four inch, 10 centimeter square. So what I do, I've got some some of the pouches for laminating sheets and I've put them through just by themselves without anything else inside so it just comes out as a clear sheet and I can then put these on the end of my cane and as this cane reduces if the end reduces because it's just a very thin plastic sheet I can actually chop down the ends to give myself more working room however a couple of tips for this as well when you put your sheet on your cane you will probably find as I have here. Although you think you've done it exactly the same height, I've actually got dips. I can feel I've got dips here, I've got a dip here. There's dips all around here. Now you want this to be exactly the same flatness all the way around so that this sheet sticks completely to the bottom of your cane. Because if it sticks completely, then all that clay will stay stuck to the sheet so that when you reduce it, it'll stay stuck on this end. If you've got any gaps, then those gaps will pull away. So you can see here that the clay does actually stick quite nicely to the sheet um, and it's quite handy because it then shows us which bits don't stick to the sheet and eventually what I want is to have the whole of that covered with a layer of clay. So I'm just going to take some excess of my scrap clay colours and I'm going to spend a bit of time on both sides just filling in where all these lumps are. I can feel them with my fingers to make sure I've got a completely flat sheet on the top of my cane and on the bottom. So I'll just fast forward whilst I do that. Okay, here we go then. So I've got 
that as flat as I possibly can on both sides. I have trimmed off my acetate sheet so they're about the size of the cane I'm going to be working to. And now all we can start to do is to start reducing it. There's no quick way of doing this. There's no easy way of doing this. This is a long, hard slog and using the firmer clays makes it even harder, which is why if you can possibly make your cane the right size that you actually want um, for your finished piece to be, it's much easier and better for you. However, as I said, this is going to be inches. There's no way I could have made a cane this complex in the size of one inch. So I'll give you the, the basic techniques to start with and then I will just fast forward because obviously there's no point watching me spend however long reducing it. But I will keep an eye on the time now. Um, just make a note of the time for myself so that I can tell you in real time how long it took me to reduce it down to the stage at which I will stop and bring you back. So to start with, I'm going to leave it flat on the tile. So it's going to be slightly harder for you to see. And I'm just going to use the sides of my hands and I'm going to press in just in the middle and rotate and press in, rotate and press in. And for the first few minutes, it looks as though absolutely nothing is happening and you just have to keep going and working with it. And what I'm looking to do is to get a slight waste on my piece. Having done it a few times on that side, I will turn over and start to do that side. And you can probably see just very slightly how it's starting to move in in the middles and that's all I'm working for just on this middle section. So I'll do that like that for a while. If it starts getting um, smaller then I might use the inside of my fingers and if it gets smaller still then I will start using my fingers and thumbs again always pressing in on the middle to create a waist. So I will start doing that and we'll speed up and we'll see how far we get. Okay, so I'm going to stop there for the minute just to show you that I've actually lost quite a lot. Most of the inside has gone down on this side, so I'm going to get a lot of um, distortion on this end, sadly. This end has stayed very much in place. Okay, so that piece of plastic fell off when I was doing it along the side like this, but I've got it roughly to the size of about two inches in the middle, which is where I want it to be to chop down. So, moment of truth. Let's take our blade and let's cut a slice and see what we've got. rose cane reduced down so slightly less on the black round than sort of one side but I'm happy with that so now we can take a couple of slices off and make ourselves a piece of jewellery and then the rest I will reduce down even further to make into the inches Here we have the final finished pieces. 
So I've made a pendant by taking one of the larger slices. This was when it was down to the, the two inch where I stopped the reduction and showed you the cane inside. And I've done very similar to what I did the two in one hexagon cane. Just made a circle in this particular case, put it over a bowl to give it some shape so it's domed and then used a little piece of the off cut. And this is actually one of the little bits that we took off um, when I was reducing it, the bit that had a bit of distortion in the middle and just made a little piece there that the leather thong can sit in. And then this one I have sanded and polished to give it a really high shine. And that has kept the pattern and the design of the rows quite well, so I'm quite happy with that. And these are the inches. So I've started to do the designs there. I might change these, I've only done a couple so far, so I'll see, I might change the border and change things up, but it shows you how much you can reduce the cane down, because this is, well you can see, about the width of a thumb. Um, and yet the pattern is still all there in it. So, that has taken you through the whole process. I know a lot of it was fast forwarded, it had to be, because otherwise the video would have been about oh, six hours long, um, and that would have just been ridiculous. But I hope I've given you enough hints and tips throughout the video so that you'll be inspired to have a go and do your own um, complex cane. They, they are fun, as long, as I said at the beginning, as long as you do your preparation and you've put everything in place to make it a successful venture, then you can have one of those wow moments when you cut through the cane, when you've reduced it, and get a little happy feeling inside that, yay, I've uh, made this pattern and made it out of clay. It's not easy, it is time consuming, but it is so worth it when it goes well. So I hope you enjoyed that. So if you stayed all the way through, you need a pat on the back, and I hope you're not too shattered. Um, but as I say, I hope you enjoyed that video. The next one won't be nearly as long. I'll do go back to doing a quick little simple um, cane for you. Something nice and easy. Um, but in the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and I really look forward to seeing some of the complex canes that lots of you hopefully will start to produce. Those of you who subscribed, as you know, I really do appreciate it. Thank you again to all of you, and I'll see you next time. That's it. Bye for now.